children are born by hearing parents, among hearing siblings, and among hearing community members. In fact, several studies have suggested that up to 95% of deaf children are born and raised by hearing parents. Deaf children parented by hearing adults in many communities make up the population that often grow up with little or no access to sign language, especially within the first five years of child development. My name is Ezine Emma Asonye, co-founder and assistant head of Project Global for SDELI. I welcome you to this year's Triple Action Project in which we join hands with the World Federation of the Deaf and the United Nations to mark the International Literacy Day, the International Day of Sign Languages and the International Week of the Deaf. And I can't tell you enough how important this day is to us in SDELI and our intervention. Here in SDELI, our core project is focused on promoting the linguistic rights of the deaf children and the deaf community. Linguistic right is a fundamental human right that touches all other human rights. Right to literacy and education, right to information and communication, and so on. In this year's International Day of Sign Languages, in which we celebrate our Triple Action Project, we promote those rights. We join the World Federation of the Deaf to advocate for those rights on behalf of the deaf children and their community. As we are ready to unleash the full package of the activities we have for you today, I entrust you in the hand of our Head of Project National, Ms. Oninechi Wandeko, to take you through the rest of the program. Oni, over to you. Thank you, Ezine. Since 2017, we have joined the World Federation of the Deaf in affiliation with its national bodies in conjunction with the United Nations to celebrate the International Day of Sign Languages, which happens every 23rd of September during the International Week of the Deaf, where we also observe the International Literacy Day. We do all this to promote the linguistic rights of deaf children and adults. The theme for this year's IDSL is We Sign for Human Rights. And bringing it down to our relation SDELI, we adopted the theme Promoting Indigenous African Sign Languages for Human Rights. I dare to present to you our project, My Hero is You. This is a literacy storybook on how children can help their communities overcome the COVID-19 pandemic. And interestingly, it was translated into several Indigenous Nigerian Sign Languages for the promotion of the linguistic and literacy rights of deaf children in indigenous African societies, especially those born into their families. This is a potential global project promoting deaf human rights and cognitive development of deaf children. Let's check out the project. Sarah's mom is her hero. She is the best mom and the best scientist in the world. But even Sarah's mom cannot find a cure for the coronavirus. What does COVID-19 look like? Sarah asks her mom. COVID-19, or the coronavirus, is so tiny we can't see it, said her mom. But it sprays in the cough and sneezes of people who are sick. And when they touch people or things, around them people who are sick get a fever and cough and can have some trouble breathing so we can't fight it because we can't see it sarah asks we can fight it sarah's mom said that's why i need you to be safe sarah the virus affects many kinds of people. 
and everyone can help us fight it. Children are special and they can help too. You need to stay safe for all of us. I need you to be my hero. Sarah laid in bed that night and did not feel like a hero at all. She felt upset. She wanted to go to school, but her school was closed. She wanted to see her friends, but it was not safe. Sarah wanted the coronavirus to stop scaring her world. Heroes have superpowers, she said to herself, closing her eyes to sleep. What do I have? Suddenly, a gentle voice whispered her name in the darkness. Who's there? Who's there? Sarah whispered back. What do you need to be a hero, Sarah? The voice asked Sarah. I need a way to tell all the children in the world how to protect themselves so they can protect anyone everyone else sarah said so what do you need me to be the voice asked i need something that can fly something with a big voice and something that can help with a whoosh something amazing stepped into the moonlight what are you gasped sarah i'm ario he said i've never seen ario before said sarah well i've been here all along said ario i come from your heart if i have you then i can tell all the children in the world about the coronavirus said Sarah. I can be a hero. But wait, Ario, is this safe to travel with the coronavirus around? Only with me, Sarah, said Ario. Nothing can harm you when we are together. So Sarah jumped on Ario's back and together they soared out through her bedroom window into the night sky. They flew toward the stars and said hello to the moon. As the sun rose, they landed in a lovely desert by pyramids where a small group of children were playing. The children cried out in joy and waved at Sarah and her Ario. Welcome, I am Salem, cried one of the boys. What are you doing here? Sorry, we can't come closer. We have to stay at least one meter away. That's why we're here, Sarah called back. I'm Sarah and this is Ario. Did you know? that children can keep their neighbors, friends, parents, and grandparents safe from the coronavirus? We all need to wash our hands with soap and water, said Salem with a smile. We know, Sarah, we also cough into our elbows if we are sick, and we wave to people instead of shaking hands we try to stay aside we try to stay inside but we live in a very crowded city not everybody is staying home hmm maybe i can help with that said ario they can't see the coronavirus but 
They can see me. Jump on, but please sit on both sides of my wings. They are at least one meter apart. Ario flew into the sky with Salem and Sarah on both wings. He flew across the city and began to roar and sing. Salem cried out to the children in the streets, Go tell your families we are safer inside. We can take care of each other best by staying home. People were amazed by what they saw. They waved and agreed to go inside their houses. Ario soared into the sky. Salem cried out in joy. Up there in the clouds, a plane flew by and the passengers looked out at them in awe. People will have to stop traveling soon, at least for now, said Salem. They are closing the borders across the world and we should all stay where we are and with people we love. So many things feel like they have changed, said Sarah. I get scared about it sometimes. It can feel scary and confusing when things are changing, Sarah, said Ario. When I feel scared, I breathe slowly and breathe out fire. Ario blew out a huge fireball. How do you relax when you feel scared? Ario asked them. I like to think about someone who makes me feel safe, said Sarah. Me too. I think of all people who help me feel safe. Like my grandparents, said Salem. I miss them. I can't give them a hug because I could give them the coronavirus. We usually see them every weekend, but not now because we have to keep them safe. Can you call them? Sarah asked her friend. Oh, yes said Salem. They call me every day and I tell them about all the things we are doing at home. It makes me feel better and it makes them feel better too. It is normal to miss people we love that we can't see right now, said Ario. It shows how much we care. Would it make you feel better to meet other heroes? Yes, please, Sarah and Salem cried out. Great. My friend Sasha has a very special superpower, said Ario. Let's go. And so they soared down to earth and landed by a small village. A girl was outside her house picking flowers. When she saw Ario, and the children sitting on his wings, she laughed. Ario, she cried. We have to stay at least one meter apart, so I will throw you a hug. What are you all doing here? Incredible, isn't it? In a bid to get this COVID-19 awareness story, My Hero Is You, translated into several languages to reach out to all. A big acknowledgement goes to Emma Asonye, Tim Esdeli, and participating sign language consultants on successfully translating this story into indigenous Nigerian sign languages to enable indigenous Nigerian deaf communities assess it. Now, Let's welcome the president of the Nigerian National Association of the Deaf, Mr. Chidi Oluji, for his IDSL speech.
in East Delhi, we are developing and documenting African indigenous sign languages. Sign to Simi and I'm the organizing secretary at Save the Deaf and Endangered Languages Initiative. I'm also a master's student studying international development. Since the protection of human rights is a huge aspect of international development, I'm very excited to see that this year's theme for the International Day of Sign Languages is We Sign for Human Rights. So the World Federation of the Deaf work to protect sign languages and human rights around the world. A human right is a basic right or freedom that belongs to every citizen of the world. And the Declaration of Universal Human Rights is available through the United Nations websites in multiple sign languages. Sign language rights are those rights that specifically pertain to language acquisition from birth. So when deaf children are born with access to language, this can improve their cognitive and social skills, allowing them to effectively communicate with the world around them. However, when they do not have access to language, this limits their communication and thus marginalizes them from society. Therefore, it is crucial to advocate for sign language rights, since sign languages are a huge aspect of deaf people's human rights. There are hundreds of diverse sign languages around the world and the work of the World Federation of the Deaf is to recognize, promote and protect these sign languages. This aligns very closely to the work of Esteli, which seeks to protect and document indigenous African sign languages. Many people cite sign languages as the key to human rights. People from all walks of life should be encouraged to learn or advocate for sign language education as the need for it can arise at any moment. However, this is not a skill commonly held by most. So with limited communications between deaf and hearing communities, this raises the potential for deaf people's human rights to be ignored or violated. So these include access to healthcare, access to education and more. Most critically, and in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, the accessibility of healthcare information for deaf communities has been of utmost priority for Esteli. That is why the organization has been so happy to have been involved in the My Hero Is You project. So this is an international project um, that provides a book for young children, which teaches them how to protect themselves, their friends and their family against the virus. Uh, the book has been translated into 140 languages and and now Esteli are so proud to present a indigenous sign language adaptation to the book as well. Human rights principles that support sign language rights include the recognition that sign languages are equal to spoken languages, um, empowering deaf communities to communicate in the ways that they choose to, governments encouraging the learning of sign languages as well as the protection of the linguistic identity of deaf communities, and finally um, the provision of early and comprehensive information, services and support for deaf children and their families. Moreover, the World Federation of the Deaf also also seek to embolden bilingual education, improved accessibility and equal opportunities for deaf communities. Thank you, Simi Labisi, for the comprehensive presentation on the promotion of sign language rights for the deaf and early access to sign language by deaf children, not excluding those born into hearing families. And this, of course, has been proven to aid the cognitive development of deaf children. Once again, thank you. Now let's move down to Zambia and see what they have for us for this year's IDSL. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Team Zambia. Thank you. 
in a year. This is why we document sign on the list in this year. Last month, in our future, we held a documentation where we documented the IES in the English history into several individual sign on the list. Interesting, right? Yes. We expect deaf people to embrace languages. It is your language, and I expect it to be your language even before you go ahead to learn all that foreign languages. Contrary to the belief that American Sign Language or even other foreign languages is the best to learn, it is advised that an individual lets go the original sign language. Just like it is advised for a hearing person to learn his own native language before going to learn other sign other foreign languages. It's important for a deaf person to also learn to sign with the original sign language before he goes ahead to learn other foreign languages such as American Sign Language, British Sign Language, or even Portuguese Sign Language. I think that we're waiting on the computer for a more inclusive community where they have to work with the best of the Which is why it's very important to know that sign language is for everyone. You will need to communicate with the person one time in order to work with According to a 2015 report by the New Times, a doctor on Adewale O'Gear of Lagos University in Hospital claimed that at least 5,000 babies are born dead every year in Nigeria. And more babies even get dead before they get to their second year. It is important for parents of these children to treat their children with equality like they treat their young children. If needed, we may give more attention to them. In line with one of the teams of the International Week of the Deaf held by World French on the Deaf, it is important to know that everyone should learn how to sign. And even more important for deaf people to learn how to sign with them. We hope that at SLE you can join us to bring more awareness and understand about these languages in order to prevent them from extinction and save them from their future benefits. We also hope that deaf people can embrace more of their indigenous languages and learn how to sign them. We wish every deaf person a happy International Sign Language Day and a happy International Week of the Deaf. Thank you. Early exposure of indigenous sign language of an environment aids the cognitive development of the deaf child in that environment. The sign for human rights. <laughs> Lamide Fatosin for your exposition on sign language rights for all deaf learners and the importance of learners to embrace their indigenous sign languages to avoid total extinction due to lack of usage. Now let's welcome another panelist on our symposium, Hicham Abdelouafi, an Algerian who is a PhD research student at the University of Catalonia, Spain. He's working on the Algerian sign language and he's here to tell us about the situation of the deaf in Algeria. I present to you, Hicham. Hello and most welcome in here. My name is Hicham, I am from Algeria and I take the great pride today to uh, contribute to the SDD's Triple Action Project for this year, 2021. It's a great honor also to present Algeria, not only the deaf community, but the hearing community as well, because we feel the sense of belonging to the deaf community. And we are all here 
to sign for the human rights. Though there are many dialects or local variants of the Algerian Sign Language or Lotli Ishar al Jazairiya that emerged in and are used by the Algerian Deaf community, it is the least documented language in the country. The Algerian Deaf community is not able to enjoy the basic human rights and, and lives as a highly marginalized group in society and often do not have access to sign language. Therefore, uh, the deaf in the country are excluded from opportunities available to their hearing counterparts. Up until now, previous studies, mainly written in French, revealed a number of sign languages or varieties that exist in the country. To name but a few, the Algerian Sign Language of Atra, the Algerian Sign Language of Oran, the Algerian Sign Language of Lawat, and the Algerian Sign Language of um, the Algerian Jewish Sign Language, which is no longer used okay, because the Algerian Jewish uh, community uh, left the country after the independence. So, uh, the Algerian deaf community uh, as well is uh, the Algerian deaf community, therefore, is much influenced. Also, um, by the types of uh, education that Algerians receive nowadays in the country. So, it is believed that education is not preparation for life, but it's life itself. So, the human rights uh, for the deaf can be fulfilled by providing a deaf education in the national sign language, for this, this, uh, for in this case, the Algerian sign language. So, many studies uh, reported that sign languages play a vital role in the educational settings. Deaf children who acquire sign language can achieve better in school than those who do not sign. And deaf children not exposed to sign language at early stage or age appropriate will be uh, linguistically marginalized and may never acquire any sign or spoken language uh, fluently. Okay. So, according to uh, uh, the World Federation of the Deaf, teaching in sign language is also to support literacy and of the deaf individuals, since their illiteracy rate is uh, incomparably higher than that of uh, their hearing counterparts. Therefore, facilitating the learning of sign language and the promotion of the linguistic identity of the uh, deaf community is not only necessary, but it is a matter of justice, we believe. So, the Algerian sign language is key for deaf individuals in communication, for instance, education, etc. So, the right to acquire and use the Algerian sign language is crucial. Deaf uh, children can benefit from the cognitive, cultural, and social advantages of the Algerian sign language if the Algerian society as a whole supports it and recognizes the rights of the deaf individuals. Algerian sign language must be learned not only by, by the deaf individuals themselves, but both in the context of early family interventions, I mean uh, deaf children, their families, deaf or hearing, uh, need to learn and use the Algerian sign language as well, and later in interventions mediated by interpreters. So, to conclude, ignoring someone's primary sign language spoken or signed means ignoring him or her in the first place. Thus, when Algerian sign language is ignored, the rights of the Algerian deaf community are ignored as well. So, improving, improving the Algerian sign language is vital in the fight of their rights. The Algerian deaf community must have the right to participate in society, government and other areas of life as equal citizens. Also, they must okay, uh, have uh, the, the right uh, for qualified, qualified and well-trained teachers and, and interpreters and, highly quality, and high quality of education as well. Despite, of, um, despite the development in, in legislation, policy, technology, etc., uh, all designed to fit uh, sign language and improving it, to meet the, uh, the, the the need of the deaf, the Algerian sign language and deaf community uh, are still facing many issues in the country. Therefore, uh, the Algerian sign language is key to Algerian uh, deaf community's human rights, and we sign for the human rights. Thank you. Every day na party, every day na jolly yo. Oh, Oya you move your body, no time for story yo. Oh, Where my woman, we supposed to the party yo. No time to check time. Everybody check your body, check it. Oh, mama yo, check it. Oh, sister yo, check it. Oh, my baby yo, check it. party.
I am not deaf, but I am deficient. Are you puzzled? Give me a moment to resolve it. I'm confident that you communicate with words or signs. Now, either ways, you can be proficient or deficient in communication. If you're proficient in spoken language, in according to the dictionary definition of deafness, you are not deaf. However, if your proficiency is in sign language, then that's your identity in your distinctive community. Deaf persons are proficient in sign language, but deficient in oral communication. Speaking individuals, on the other hand, are proficient in spoken communication, but can be deaf to sign language communication. Don't we then have something in common? I think it is the need to learn to communicate with each other. In SDLE, we take pride in the research and documentation of indigenous African sign language. This is why we work on several literacy projects, like the translation of the My Hero Is You story to indigenous African sign languages. Our commitment is to help deaf communities in Africa communicate effectively and to bridge the communication gap between the deaf community and the hearing community. As we celebrate the International Day for Sign Language, I call you to acknowledge and support the uniqueness of every deaf community around you. We may be from different worlds of communication, but we need each other. Therefore, we must learn to live together. Hi. My name is Paninga Mulia and happy International Day of Sign Language to you. Thank you. Africa has its own indigenous sign language peculiar to African deaf people. It is only ideal that this language be developed and documented. Thank you. 
to um, SLA Triple Action Project. Today is the International Day of Sign Languages, a day we celebrate the Triple Action Project of SLA, the International uh, Literacy Day, the International Day of Sign Languages, and also we use the opportunity to mark the International Week of the Deaf. I'm here today with um, Dr. Mary Edward Agrona, and uh, we are here to have a few discussion about this year's theme, the theme for International Day of Sign Languages, which is We Sign for Human Rights. And Dr. Mary Edward is a researcher in sign languages and sign linguistics. She has laid her hands in a lot of works regarding the indigenous sign languages of Africa, especially, specifically working on the Adam Robe sign languages. And um, um, her work is something that, you know, you may want to see anytime, any day. All right, I welcome you, Dr. Edward. I'm glad to have you here. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and I'm glad to be hosted by you today. And I'm glad to have been working with you all these years. It's been an awesome time. Thank you. All right, so today we just have um, one simple assignment to look at the theme for the International Day of Sign Languages 2021 as researchers in the deaf community, especially the um, African deaf community, where we believe that sign languages are grossly marginalized and um, the deaf communities are also very marginalized linguistically. And um, you and I have been working on looking at the um, the rights, the linguistic rights of deaf children in Africa. And, and eventually today, the topic of the theme for the IDSL 2020 war happens to be we sign for human rights. So um, Dr. Edward, as a researcher in the deaf community in Africa for many years now, um, how, what does this theme mean to you, your work, uh, right here, uh, I, I want you to be speaking as 
a researcher, a hearing person working with the deaf community in African deaf communities. Okay, thank you. So first of all, I want to appreciate all the people I've ever worked with from um, deaf communities scattered across Ghana, Nigeria, from Madame Robert to Sawom to Media. I want to appreciate every person, especially the deaf people who have given me access to their community. I do not take it for granted and I do not uh, disregard their input in the development of their own sign languages and I want to appreciate them even for the support given to me all these years to be able to take data to analyze as a hearing um, person in a deaf community. Um, what I want to say is the fact that sometimes we get so much into their community we tend to forget the people we are working with and that is one of the reasons I love s mm -hmm. because we, at Ezeli, it's not like a group of hearing people talking about sign languages. We are working yeah. with the people and that is what I have also been agitating for all this while that I don't want to be that um, sign linguist who is the, 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 the show. The show runs around me. I am I am the figure and everybody is behind me. No, I'm, mm -hmm. I just want to be that sign linguist who is behind the show projecting the deaf community and that is what Absolutely. we have been doing projecting the indigenous deaf community bringing to light especially the things they go through as deaf individuals if you're coming from africa you know the stigmatization you face just for being deaf the mm -hmm. um, yeah. un convention has signed lots of policies for human rights but you and i are fully aware what the indigenous deaf people in and around the world face it's 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 ridiculous to say. It is. So it as, is. as a hearing linguist, what I do is to be behind the scene and project the deaf people, let their words be, be speaking for itself. It shouldn't be um, Mary Edward, who is running the forefront. It should be them giving me the nod to, to present their work. And that is why um, the new course with nothing about us without us is, is very, very important because- Yes. When I started researching on sign languages in 2012, I was I was naive. I didn't know so much about deaf communities. But as I continued doing my master's dissertation, I realized that no, these are the people who own the language. These are the people who are the custodian of the language. So we cannot do mm. anything about their sign language without them being involved. And that has been my, my yardstick, that has been my motivation all this while. I don't take it for granted. Of course I do sign, but I don't, I wouldn't go teaching people how to sign mm -hmm. if there is a deaf person who can actually do the work perfectly. I, I don't mind speaking for a deaf person to be doing the signing because if I'm not in uh, contact with deaf people, as soon as you start signing, you take uh, the show, everybody's attention is on you and the deaf community misses the show. So we want to project them. Those are the people, they, they, they are not a group of people who need to be at the background and we the hearing people will be at the forefront. Yeah doing mm -hmm. all the signs and people be like wow you can <laughs> sign so well so, so well. i i love exactly because we are pushing that you you are it is your language come and run the show and let us support you as much as we can as researchers obviously coming from ghana i know one of the limitation for sign language documentation for deaf people itself is the fact that most universities do not even allow deaf people to have degree in linguistics and mm. linguistics is a basic tool so if other organizations do not come down to train deaf people on how to do their own language documentation they are always lacking so if i happen to be at such a location what i do is involving the community let, letting them know that this is your language. The, your language is endangered. Your language mm -hmm. is at risk. I mm -hmm. can't come and do the work for you. We have to do it together. It's a collaborative effort. Work. You, you yes. go on an agreement with the deaf people that this is your language. I can't preserve your language. You have to. You have to teach your children. You Absolutely. have to allow your, your community to as 
accept that this is your language it cannot be yeah. i can't come and force it on your community when you as a deaf person you are not advocating for it so first and foremost we standing behind letting the deaf people stand in front to yeah. using our position as researchers to push the, the mission ahead we have been exposed to different people been exposed to different sources of help for these people so at least our position can help project the work can help push the work forward but we do not take the work on our shoulders mm -hmm. and carry it as if it is our language no it is their language and we cannot document their language without them without them thank you so I, much I, I wanted to jump in on the area you talked about being naive when you started your work and uh, that reminds me of not just the naivety or the the um it, it, in fact, the lack of understanding that surrounds the deaf community in Africa that we have found since we've been doing our work, which of course ranges up to uh, from the deaf people themselves, the hearing people, a lot of whom claim to be working with the deaf community. And, you know, can you can, kind of um, highlight a little bit how much this tends towards denying the the human rights or the linguistic rights of deaf children with regards to um, your work. Can you speak a little bit on that? Okay, so um, first of all, I want to say that um, from my encounter with deaf people, I've realized that um, sometimes we make policies that really limit the human rights or the linguistic rights of deaf people. And one of such policies is even the language of education. So a group mm -hmm. of hearing people will sit somewhere, make a decision, take a step that deaf people should go to school and learn in English. They do not consider the fact that these people only communicate by the hands, by the face and the body. So teaching Absolutely. them in English alone is denying them the opportunity to acquire the same information their contemporaries are acquiring. So I think most deaf people have been limited in different ways. Aside English, they go to school, They, for example, if you're from Adambrobe, you are introduced to Adambrobe Sign Language as a child. You go to school and there is a massive shift from Adambrobe Sign Language to Ghanaian Sign Language. So your linguistic right is tampered on. You have to quickly adjust to Ghanaian Sign Language. You come back to the village and you are not sure of what to use, whether to use Ghanaian sign language or to use Adamobe sign language, then certain social economic factors will come to play. Then suddenly you realize that, okay, my language is nice, but I really want to be associated with a language of education that is mm -hmm. that has prestige. So mm -hmm. indirectly, the deaf child's linguistic competence is hindered on by policymakers, by the educational systems, and they go to school, come back from school, and there are different people using different languages. It's not just the case in Adambo, but I think it's the case in different places across Africa, yeah. across yeah. the world. So yeah. what can I do as a, um, a language expert to, to help halt this incident? One of the things I'm gradually doing is to advocate that um, your, your sign language is the best language you can have. Before Absolutely. You, you raise somebody else's language above yours, you should know that if the last user of your language dies, the language ceases to exist. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to die and five, ten years later, nobody is using your language. It's gone extinct. So I'm creating this awareness among deaf people I meet that, let me tell you, your language is the best. It cannot be disregarded and you will have the access to use another person's language. So I'm creating the awareness among them because they've already been told that their indigenous sign languages are pigeon, they are gestures, they are just not real human languages. So for them to be able to use real human languages, it's either they use the urban sign language or they learn to speak English. And that is yeah. even the one that breaks my heart. I can't imagine any of my two daughters who are growing up with um, Akan and English and being taken to China and being told that from day one they had to start speaking Mandarin. Yeah. I'm sure the court, the shock alone will be difficult for them. But mm. obviously they will end up learning the Mandarin and probably forget my English and Akan. So that is what is exactly happened. 
people are abandoning their own languages just because they've been told they have to they have to that if you sign your english is even bad and i think indirectly we are stifling deaf children we are halting their progress and we are making decisions such that the deaf brain is five percent it's not as um intelligent as the other brains we, I, it doesn't really make sense even at, at with my phd if you teach me tell me to learn in Igbo right now you can imagine i wouldn't I perform well yeah so yeah. if we want the deaf child to progress academically we should allow the deaf child to learn in a language that he or she fully understand can make sense in it and can reproduce it succinctly without making errors after mm. that when they go to school they can learn the other languages in Absolutely. addition to that so that Absolutely. is what i want to say yeah thank you thank you um dr edward and finally i wanted us to look at the 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 milestone the, of the work we have been doing you are aware that um, in this year's um idsl we are using it to um showcase some of the latest documentations that we are currently doing so and um you see that the name of the project my hero is you is gradually making waves so looking at the the documentation or uh, the touch of the project my hero is you and looking at 2016 when you and i were in abuja uh, and in a worry documenting the students that were in the school when they were telling you the difference uh, between the sign language they were made to use in the classroom and the ones they would have to use outside of the classroom which of course they told you they were all pigeons and all that you uh, i just want you to like touch how you feel about the milestone we have covered so far and in relation to what this year's theme is all about, I'm so, I, I feel so glad that it seems that our work, the work we're already doing, isn't that the WFD is, is even looking at our work, mirroring it to the themes of, you know, every year's um, IDSL. So um, I don't know how you feel about this, you know, using Nigeria's case study and some of the works you've also done in Adamro Bay, you know, sign language, where we are today as opposed to where we were about four or five years ago. So um, I just want to say um, I, am, I am very proud of us because the journey, when I joined SDL, I didn't know how far we will get to. But now I Absolutely. can sit down and I can project that the future is very bright. Yes, sir. So we've, to, to convert my hero is you into indigenous Nigerian sign languages. It's, it's, it's fantastic. When you mentioned the project to me, I just couldn't believe it that you are traveling all the way to Nigeria to do this. Wow. That shows how much the indigenous African sign languages play important role in, in our documentation projects. And um, the fact that we, we want the world to know that whatever other languages can be used for, sign languages can also do the same thing. We want the world to know that sign languages are full-fledged human languages. They are not pantomimes, they are not gestures, they are not um, um, pigeons, they are full-fledged human languages that can perform all the activities that every language can do. Of course, if a language doesn't have a word, a phrase, a sentence for a particular thing. What we should know is the fact that even English, the mm. almighty English has borrowed so much, so, so much. So if another sign language is borrowing from another sign language, it's not an error. At it's all. just what languages do. And looking at the progress, it has been a massive spike. It's like we were on on a bumpy road, suddenly we go to an asphalted <laughs> road. Now we are on a motorway and we are we are gradually going. And I am thankful to all the deaf people who have been supporting this program. We cannot do it without them. It is not our project. It no. is their project. So I'm thankful for the dedication. 
for their commitment, for their desire to see that their own languages survive. That is great. That is great. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Edward. Um, I have to say that um, if we were given all the time to talk about all this, to discuss this work and to discuss our motivations, our inspirations, and we may take much more than two hours to do that. And um, but we are grateful for the um, brief moments we are here that, to discuss this and to enable you to also know um, how much more that is needed to be done. And like Dr. Edward emphasized, um, we are not doing this work, posting ourselves as hearing people who are coming to deliver the deaf people and deaf language, never, ever. That is not what we do, that's not who we are. We project the deaf community and the deaf individuals. We are so grateful to all the deaf persons, deaf individuals, that have worked with us, that are still working with us, both locally and internationally. If I were to borrow our current uh, mantra, the hero, you are all our heroes, okay? And uh, we are grateful. Of course, that is the sign for um, hero in our indigenous language. So we cannot really um, do this without you. You bring, you put life into the the burden Dr. Edward and I and the rest of Team SDLE members who are hearing the burden we carry. We did not give ourselves this burden. We are grateful that we are carrying it and we are doing it, but we couldn't have carried any of this without you. So we're grateful to you today um, for watching this program and being with us. Um, so just one last word from Dr. Edward and we are done here to the deaf community in Africa and the world. So I want to tell every person watching us today, every deaf individual, I know this video will be assigned so you are watching and understand. We just want to say our hero is you. Sure. You are our hero. And we know with you, indigenous sign languages will strive, will live, long live indigenous African sign languages long live deaf communities across the world. Our mm -hmm. hero is you. You. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Edward, and thank you for the work you do. Happy International Day of Sign Languages 2021. Happy International Day of Sign Languages. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you very much, Emma Asongi and Mary Edwards for shedding light and telling us about your tremendous work in the deaf community. A very big thank you to team members of SDE, your commitment towards promoting the deaf cause and also an all-round development for the deaf community is remarkable and can really acknowledge. Many thanks to participants of this year's IDSL for joining us from different parts of the world. I hope you enjoyed this year's celebration and we hope to see you next year as we look forward to a more inclusive society for the deaf, the equal linguistic rights and all around the world of the deaf in Africa. Thank you very much and God bless you. Sign language is a linguistic right of the deaf. Every sign language should be developed, recognized and promoted. Sign language should be used in every sector of the economy and every deaf should be able to access it. Yes, sign language interpreters need to be in the schools, in the hospital, in banks, airports, train stations and other public places, even in churches. Yes, because the deaf people deserve to hear the word of God. Every indigenous deaf community has an indigenous sign language peculiar to them. But these indigenous sign languages have been endangered over time because of what we call sophisticated sign languages from the Western world. It's high time we researched, developed, document and promote indigenous African sign languages. It's high time these indigenous African sign languages become official sign languages in African countries. I am Bonnie. I am Blessed. We sign and we sign for human rights, for human rights, for human rights. So, um, yeah. 
Sorry this video is coming 